our application of evaluation is ongoing. So if something is presented to us uh, between uh, provisional and final, we will evaluate that as an ongoing review of that application. We'll also present any materials that are necessary, and then finally, the results of that inspection, uh, I guess ascertaining or evaluating compliance. Uh, the presentation will include that inspectional report, uh, as well as, if necessary, any photos that we may take, uh, any materials that we've gathered during the inspectional process. Last month, we may uh, recommend certain conditions to be met at the final stage that we will then evaluate before uh, the facility may as examples. Uh, I've mentioned previously the, the conditions of uh, product being input into metric, uh, all inventory being tagged properly, and ensuring that there's a valid API or upload to metric uh, that we can ascertain and inspect against using uh, the RFID technology. Sure, it would be my hope uh, and my expectation that uh, at the final license stage would be first a presentation from staff on the inspectional process, the evaluation of the license application, uh, but also to make available to the commission the folks that actually conducted that inspection. Uh, and you can therefore hear from them. Also, if there's any specific questions that I may not have the specific answer to that I may not have been exposed to, uh, they'd be available to you. Thank you, Commissioner Bryce. So we'll make that happen. Any other questions on uh, the final license before we get to the last step, which is uh, approved for opening? <coughs> Establishment opening? Uh, so as I indicated, the, the metric is obviously an important compliance tool for us. We want to make sure that uh, folks are like, in it uh, and that it's functioning uh, for each individual licensee, but also that we're able to see that information from a batch upload standpoint. Uh, so that may, again, may be one of the conditions that we would recommend. If there's any other conditions that would need to be placed, certainly uh, ascertain compliance with that. And then what we would intend to do from the staff level is essentially issue a notice that is, uh, you may in fact commence your full operation. So uh, a good example, or hopefully will be illustrative there, is a, say for instance, a retail establishment uh, secures a final license, can therefore begin to collect and gather inventory, but they would not be able to sell to the general public just yet. Uh, we would conduct that in kind of final review, make sure that that inventory is in fact a metric that they're functional, It's hard to give a, so a timeline that's really going to be largely up to the licensee, but assuming they're able to do that efficiently, uh, we would certainly get out there again promptly uh, to ensure that they're ready to go and make that commensal operations notice available. So once again, thank you for your responsiveness and putting things together and, and for the thoughtfulness of this to, to be a very complete and thorough process. Uh, let me ask, are there questions either on this last slide of that establishment opening or on the process as a whole? Anybody on the commission? Go ahead. Um, I want to thank you for the thoroughness of that presentation. It was exactly what I was envisioning. Um, and I also want to uh, say I have full faith and confidence in the licensing and investigation team. And I can see how efficiently they're working and that this is moving as fast as possible. Um, I also just want to acknowledge um, that hear the public, I hear from the public a lot that their primary concern is um, the dates and when the date um, of the store's opening will be. Um, and it's not that we have that date and are refusing to give it. Um, as you can see from this presentation, there are many steps where um, they're out of our control and we can't predict it. But what we can do is make a commitment for the steps that are under our control for how long they will take. And we can also commit at each um, opportunity that we have to share where we are in the process. Um, but I, I definitely want to say that out loud because in the past, I might have been impatient about questions about when those stores are opening. Um, and I absolutely acknowledge and understand that the voters are our most important constituency that put this forward, that they've been waiting two years, um, that we have put dates out there and so they now see a perceived delay um, and so I'm making it a priority I think we should all make it a priority to um, 
continually check in with the timeline, where we are in the timeline, and then as soon as we are able to give a date. Other questions or comments? Commissioner Doyle, I can't see you raising your hand. Schedule of meetings indicates that uh, some direction or decision on the two issues of social consumption and delivery uh, would be anticipated by the January 10th meeting, which would then give us an ability to staff if necessary to start developing uh, draft regulations that might give us that opportunity to come back in February to um, The middle uh, column you see there is more key dates and deadlines and events. The first is more of a plug that. Boston Chamber is uh, putting together a program uh, relative to the fierce urgency of now. And the uh, uh, Shakia, uh, the Director of Community Outreach, uh, is planning an event relative to the intersection of cannabis and equity, which is on September 25th. There's information on our website uh, as far as registering for that event. Registration has been very um, robust, which is obviously a good thing for us to see. And so we wanted to put a plug in for that. Uh, as you mentioned, October 29th is one of the public comment period closes on the draft uh, co-location and medical marijuana regs uh, and the public hearings are scheduled uh, again Springfield and Boston on that day as well. January 1st is a uh, deadline for the report. Uh, the special commission on uh, operating under the influence of driving impaired is uh, that statutory deadline. That is a commission that I chair with uh, 12 other members you know, we're meeting regularly and lastly as previously mentioned in February the, uh, the anticipated timeline for consideration of any regulations relative to social consumption and delivery. Um, on the right hand column, the right most column, uh, is just other meetings that are happening around uh, the commission but certainly relevant to the commission's work. The campus advisory board, the full board, uh, has a meeting scheduled for November 8th. The special commission on operating of the influence uh, and impaired driving has two meetings scheduled on October 12th and November 9th. Uh, Commissioner Doyle, as the chair of the Energy and Environment Working Group, has been meeting uh, feverishly and has a meeting scheduled for October 12th. Uh, and lastly, the Citizen Review Committee uh, has developed in the Commission's regulations uh, 
uh, is scheduled to meet on November 29th. Thank you. Are there any questions? So just to underscore, the social consumption discussion and delivery discussion, um, it may look misleading up there that those are the only discussions, but that's actually the beginning, right? And um, it will be focused on the concerns that were previously raised um, at our public meetings, and our staff will be making a report on those issues at the time. And I would encourage um, the staff that's putting that together, um, if they have recommendations, based on their research or looking at other states or based on their work would like to see, um, I would love to hear those recommendations on the report. Um, is there a public comment period associated with those topics? It's not what was anticipated. I think my expectation or my hope would be to um, also, just as a refresher for the commission, is pull any public comments we did receive during that draft regulation phase. Uh, that's really something Recommendation of the provisional licenses. There are three orders of business uh, for the commission uh, to discuss. Uh, the first is a draft that was prepared by the executive director and staff on the annual report due to the legislature on September, on a report September 28th. Uh, that has been circulated amongst the commission. Um, I would encourage the commission to raise any uh, questions or concerns they have from a substantive standpoint to the extent that there are any uh, edit or ministerial changes. Uh, that online with uh, uh, recommendations to uh, to uh, the executive director. So I, I'd like to open the conversation for any comments that said or the substantive nature on the report as drafted. Um, I just have one comment. I just want to thank the staff. Um, I think that once people read this report to the legislature, they'll see the diligence by which we've been working, um, you know, over the past year, and the fact that the staff has been so involved in such a short period of time. Um, I think this highlights a lot of uh, what people have seen in our meetings and what we've tried to accomplish going thus far. Um, and I really um, appreciate the work that everyone has put into this, and not only the report, but the daily work that happens at the commission. Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, other questions or comments on the uh, report? Commissioner Doyle? Thank you. I have Right, the one that was circulated, one that was circulated earlier today. Right. Okay, thank you, Commissioner McBride. Um, I just have one additional comment, and it's an edit that I will um, suggest to the executive director and staff, just uh, about the number of presentations that um, the commissioners have made to stakeholder groups um, since we began a year ago. Um, I, I know that it is many, many presentations that all of us have done, and I would like to see of that because for the initial period of time um, before we had staff with when it was just the five commissioners and the executive director, that was sort of the primary way that we were out talking about the regulations and talking about our mandate and what we were doing. Um, and then that has, with the addition of staff, that has become, I think, even more robust as we included staff in a lot of those presentations. Um, and I think it's a really important piece of what we have done and I think what we're going to continue to do, being out in public and talking about what we're doing and bringing that to the various stakeholders. So I'll suggest that edit um, to you and, and briefly. Yeah. Great. Thank you. Um, any other comments or suggestions? Sure, if I may. Yes, please. I think just for context, folks, this will be an annual report and an annual exercise that the um, is required. Um, 
prior statutorily to be issued uh, to the appointing authorities of the Commission to the Governor, uh, Attorney General, and Treasurer, as well as the legislature, specifically the Ways and Means Committee, the Marijuana Policy Committee, uh, on an annual basis, 90 days after they close one this meeting. So that's where that September, or end of September deadline came from. Um, but I also want to to Commissioner Flanagan's point, um, and not to belabor the point, but I think the intent here was to have an organic effort from staff. Heads to really uh, lay out the work that they've done and conducted, and then obviously give the commission a chance to really use that together uh, in a comprehensive way. So, in fact, uh, this would be an annual exercise that we will build off of uh, in future years. I think we've all been reflective over the last uh, couple of weeks as uh, we kind of, uh, you know, not celebrated, but uh, certainly uh, have noticed that it's our first anniversary, and uh, you know, it's, uh, it's a pretty amazing set of things that have been accomplished. Said we'll leave uh, editorial and ministerial uh, suggested changes to uh, to uh, be uh, um, given to the executive director after the meeting. But uh, if there are no other comments, then I'd like to ask for a motion to uh, approve the uh, executive director to submit this report subject to the editorial changes and ministerial changes that uh, might come. But to submit this report on or before the 28th of uh, September. Thank you very much, Commissioner Flanagan. Can I have a second? Uh, let the record show Commissioner Flanagan made a motion to approve, seconded by Commissioner McBride. Uh, your vote, Commissioner Doyle? Um, uh, I, but I just want to make sure that Commissioner McBride's proposed edit is recognized in the motion. Fine. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Doyle. Commissioner McBride? Commissioner Hoffman, I, uh, I correct you that you know, the commission approved um, the executive director's today's report to legislative subject to both ministerial edits as well as Commissioner uh, McBride's proposed edit. Thank you very much again for your hard work here. Uh, the uh, next two agenda items I'm going to do at the same time. Uh, as I said, uh, uh, based upon the law, we are required to appoint for an annual term a treasurer of the commission and a secretary of the commission. And I just, first of all, wanted to acknowledge and thank uh, um, Commissioner Doyle for her role as secretary of the commission and uh, Commissioner Flanagan for her role over the last 12 months as treasurer. Um, they are unpaid positions um, and they are above and beyond uh, day, their day jobs. And so uh, I really appreciate the energy and the effort and uh, the impact that two of them have had by playing those roles, but I think it is appropriate that those roles rotate, that we don't ask anybody to do that for more than a year consecutively. With that in mind, um, I would like to ask for a motion to um, uh, nominate uh, Commissioner McBride as the treasurer of the commission uh, for the next 12 months. So moved. And a second, please. Second. Uh, thank you. Um, the motion is to uh, nominate Commissioner McBride as the treasurer of the commission. I have, uh, Voice vote starting with Commissioner Doyle. Aye. Commissioner McBride, do you have to abstain? Does she have to abstain or does she vote for herself? Uh, I think she could vote for herself, yeah. Uh, but it'd be really interesting if she voted against herself. But. There's no, there's no conflict of interest there. Commissioner McBride? Aye. Commissioner Pennell? Aye. Commissioner Flanagan? Aye. Commissioner Hoffman, I, the director of the commission, actually approves uh, the appointment of uh, Commissioner Brown as treasurer of the commission for the next 12 months. Thank you. I would uh, also like to ask for a motion to appoint Commissioner Tyler as the secretary of the commission for the next 12 months. Can I have a motion, please? Second. Uh, let the director show Commissioner McBride made the motion to approve, seconded by Commissioner Flanagan. Uh, let's do a voice vote starting with Commissioner Doyle. Aye. Commissioner McBride? Aye. Commissioner Tyler, we've proven that you do not have to accuse yourself. Aye. Commissioner Flanagan? Aye. Uh, Commissioner Hoffman, I uh, let the record show that uh, you can ask the commission approve the appointment of Commissioner Tyler as Secretary of the Commission. Uh, so, again, thank you to uh, Commissioners uh, Doyle and Flanagan for their previous service, and thank you in advance to Commissioners McBride and Tyler for their future service. Uh, that is it for commission business, other than uh, listening and discussing and voting on the staff recommendations with respect to eight provisional licenses. Mr. Executive Director. 
Uh, first uh, license for consideration is BCWC LLC, number MCN 281263, which is Tier 2 Indoor Cultivation. Move through these as expeditious as possible, but uh, sort of there would be, again, the intention to preserve, as you indicated, this BCWC LLC. Uh, I didn't make up the name. Uh, it doesn't roll off the tongue, but the address proposed is 34 Extension Street in Attleboro. Uh, as you indicated, the license type is cultivation, uh, tier two, which authorizes up to 10,000 square feet. Uh, the applicant also has a product manufacturing uh, application, which is pending uh, next for consideration. Individuals are uh, listed on the executive summary. There is one entity that uh, is involved in the establishment, which is Future Farm Technologies. They're a Canadian corporation that lends financial support to applicants, uh, including this applicant, and they'll hold an equity stake in the establishment. Uh, this applicant is an RMD priority applicant, uh, as they are currently in compliance with EPH as an RMD. Uh, this would be, uh, they have an RMD for provisional certificate of registration for dispensing, cultivation, and processing. They have a host community agreement that was executed on April 30th, uh, and certification was provided. They also held a uh, community outreach meeting on April 30th with notice published in the Sun Chronicle. On um, this application, we sent the notice to the municipality on July 6th. The response we received from the municipality was that they were currently uh, going through their local ordinances and enacting them, uh, so they could not certify at that time. I can say that the ordinances have been, in fact, uh, adopted locally as of September. So they, we did not receive certification, the 60 days didn't expire, however, there are now uh, local ordinances in place. And we will inspect uh, during the final licensing process their compliance against that municipality. Their plan, the summary of their plan to positively impact areas of disproportionate impact is that they plan to focus efforts in Mansfield and Taunton, uh, as uh, their proximity to Attleboro is relevant. Uh, the applicant has a two-pronged approach for positive impact. First is a financial support they plan to make no less than $10,000 in financial contributions to the Boys and Girls Clubs of Taunton uh, and the Mansfield YMCA Arts and Education Center. And for industry-specific uh, instruction, they plan to provide no less than 50 hours per year towards educating individuals from disproportionately impacted locations in specific areas of the industry. There were no concerns raised during the background check. There were also no disclosures of any past civil or criminal actions or any occupational license issues. There are several uh, individuals associated with the application that have uh, business interests in other jurisdictions. That includes Brett Fish, Blair Fish, and John Kenny with an interest in Ocean State Cultivation Center, uh, which is the medical marijuana business in Rhode Island. Uh, Brett Fish also has an interest in Ohio craft cultivators uh, in New Hampshire. Derek Ross has an interest in Future Farms Maine LLC, and Harris Associates LLC. Uh, Future Farms Maine, of course, is in Maine, and Harris is in these disclosures do not present any suitability issues. Uh, they secure their civic good standing with DOR as well as the Secretary of the Commonwealth. Their plan to be operational um, is that they report they have engaged with architects to renovate and expand their current facility. They expect that construction will conclude in early December 2018. Uh, their plan to be operational Monday through Sunday, 24 hours a day. They submit the required summaries, evaluate those summaries, uh, and deem them or determine them to be substantially compliant with our regulations. Diversity plan includes forming a diversity and equality committee to accomplish the goal of being diverse and to promote equitable hiring practices, establishing a mentorship program, uh, creating incentives for current employees to recruit individuals from diverse backgrounds, and analyzing their employee population to ensure its diversity. Uh, they provide a detailed cultivation plan that summarizes their process, the supplies, and the techniques that will be utilized throughout the propagation, cloning, vegetative, flowering, harvesting, and curing phases. Therefore, the recommendations to approve provisional license with the following conditions. The final license is subject to the certification of the applicant who remains in compliance with EPH regulations. The final license is subject to inspection and audit to ascertain compliance with our regulations. And the final license is subject to inspection and audit to ascertain that the facilities are compliant with all of the state local codes, bylaws, ordinances, and regulations. That the applicant shall cooperate with and provide information to the commission staff. And lastly, that the provisional license is subject to the payment of the appropriate license fee. Uh, this is based on the applicant's compliance with the laws and regulations of the Commonwealth and suitability for licensure and upon the evaluation of the thoroughness of the applicant's responses to the required criteria. As of this date, uh, the applicant has demonstrated that compliance and accordingly the applicant is recommended for a provisional license with those conditions. Thank you. Are there any questions for the Executive Director? Uh, 
I can have a motion, please, to approve the staff recommendation to approve a provisional license for uh, the CWC LLC number MC and 281263. Second. I have a second, please. Uh, let's work to Commissioner Title made the motion to approve, seconded by Commissioner Flanagan. Uh, your vote, Commissioner Doyle? Aye. Commissioner McBride? Aye. Commissioner Title? Aye. Commissioner Flanagan? Aye. Commissioner Hoffman, aye. Let the record show that the Commission has to approve the approved granting of the provisional license to MCM 281263. Thank you very much. Next uh, is also BCWC LLC number MPN 281325 for product manufacturer. Executive Director. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As you indicated, the applicant is a BCWC LLC. The address again is 34 Extension Street in Attleboro. This is their product manufacturing uh, application. The Commission has just approved a provisional license for their cultivation application. The same individuals are associated with the application, and the same entity uh, is also associated with the application. This too is an RFP priority applicant. They are uh, in compliance with the DPH. The Hills Community Agreement was executed. The owner should be himself in the area as well. And the same issue as far as the local certification, uh, given that we sent the notice in July, uh, we did not receive within 60 days of response, or the uh, city of Attleboro has in fact connected their local ordinances. The same summary of this uh, positively impacted areas of disproportionate impact applies to this application. While there were no concerns raised during the background check on individuals or entities, uh, there were disclosures of the same business uh, interests in other jurisdictions. The applicant's proposed timeline is the same in that they have uh, engaged with architects to renovate and expand the facility with the expectation of uh, construction concluding in early December. Uh, the hours of operation are the same, Monday through Sunday, 24 hours a day. The same summaries were reviewed and evaluated. Um, substantial uh, compliance or substantial compliance being determined. The diversity plan uh, is the same as well. Their products to be produced or sold are uh, oils, including cooking oils, baked goods such as brownies, cookies, Chocolates, tinctures, lozenges, beverages, transdural applications, <coughs> patches, bombs, and sobs, uh, vaporization cartridges, chatter, rosin, honey, hash, wax, sauce, capsules, tea bags, gummies, and infused sugar. Uh, the recommendation is that the applicant be issued a provisional license with the following conditions. That the final license is subject to certification of the applicant who dates in compliance with EPH regulations. That the final license is subject to inspection and audit to ascertain compliance with our regulations. The final license is subject to inspection and audit to ascertain that the facilities are compliant with all applicable state and local codes, bylaws, ordinances, and regulations. That the applicant shall cooperate with and provide information to the commission staff. That the provisional license is subject to the the appropriate license. This recommendation is based on the applicant's demonstrated compliance with the laws and regulations of the Commonwealth and suitability for licensure and upon the evaluation of the thoroughness of the responses to the required criteria. As of this date, the applicant has demonstrated compliance with the laws and regulations of the Commonwealth, and therefore the applicant is recommended for a provisional license with the previously mentioned conditions. Thank you. Any other questions for uh, Executive Director? I can have a motion please to uh, approve staff's recommendation to grant a provisional license to the CWC LLC MPN 281325. Can I have a second, please? Uh, let's work to Commissioner Title made the motion to approve, seconded by Commissioner McBride. Your vote, Commissioner Doyle? Aye. Commissioner McBride? Aye. Commissioner Title? Aye. Commissioner Flanagan? Aye. Commissioner Hoffman? Aye. Let the record show that the Commission unanimously approved the staff's recommendation to grant a provisional license, MPN 281325. Thank you. Uh, next license uh, is Late Spring Incorporated, doing business as Gage Canvas Company, uh, number MRN 281248, retailer. Mr. Executive Director. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As you indicated, this applicant is Late Spring Incorporated, DBA Gage Canvas Company. The proposed address is 38 Littleton Road in Ayer. Uh, license being sought is that of a retailer. Uh, this applicant uh, is not tied to an existing RFP, however, one of the owners. Uh, is in fact uh, affiliated with another entity that is Central App Compassionate Care, uh, which has applied for uh, several licenses and provisions to not raise any ownership issue, however. The individuals tied to the business are that the individual is John Hillier as the owner and director. Uh, it does not have any other interests or, or entities that were disclosed. This applicant is a general applicant. Uh, it 
not an RP or uh, an RP power priority application. The host community agreement was executed on March 27th. The community outreach meeting was held on August 2nd, uh, with the notification being published in this sub. Uh, no objections raised in the commission. We received a response from the municipality on August 22nd. The applicant is in compliance with all local ordinances and bylaws. Their plan to positively impact areas of disproportionate impact includes uh, holding informational sessions, skill assessments, job fairs, and resume cover letter workshops uh, at least three times per year in Fishburg, Lowell, and Worcester to help individuals in these areas build the necessary skills to become more attractive and employment the candidates. Giving a hiring preference to individuals from areas of disproportionate impact and supporting local charities and community organizations. After one year of operating the adult use market, the applicant will review the following uh, in order to measure the success of the plan. Attendance at those informal sessions and workshops, outcomes of interviews generated from job fairs, overall staff that are past or present residents of disproportionate impacted areas, and overall financial support provided to local charities and organizations. There are no concerns raised during the background check on individuals or entities uh, affiliated with the application, uh, and no disclosures of any business interest in other jurisdictions. They plan to become operational as if they were required the approval of architectural plans and minor uh, renovations to Structure, including the installation of security systems, fixtures, and equipment, they indicated that a short renovation period, approximately two months, uh, would be required to become operational once approved for a provisional license. Their hours of operation proposed are Monday through Sunday, 9 a.m. to 10 p.m. They submitted the required summaries with evaluating those summaries and determined them to be substantially compliant with our regulations. The diversity plan includes doing the following conducting deliberate advertising and other forms of outreach to ensure diverse individuals are aware of employment openings, developing and implementing a screening system to mitigate bias of any employees in the interview process, providing trainings and professional development opportunities to staff at all levels, and lastly, conducting annual reviews of applicant pools, staff demographics, and changes in employment status, promotion to races, to ensure that its goals of diverse and unbiased workforce are achieved. This is a uh, proposed retail application, so the applicant plans to establish and maintain business relationships with other adult use establishments to acquire new supply. And Mr. Hillier has indicated he's also the owner of an R&D that is applying for adult use cultivation and product manufacturing licenses. The staff recommends issuing a provisional license with the following conditions, that the final license is subject to certification that the applicant remains in compliance with EPH regulations, that the final license is subject to inspection to ascertain compliance with our regulations, Final license is subject to inspection by the ascertain their facilities are compliant with all applicable state, local code, bylaws, ordinances, and regulations. They shall cooperate with and provide information to the commission staff. And the provisional license is subject to the payment of the appropriate license being pursuant to our regulations. This is based on the applicant's demonstrated compliance with the laws and regulations of the Commonwealth, the suitability for licensure, and the quality evaluation of the thoroughness of the applicant's responses. Uh, we certify that we've done the due diligence review, and as of this date, they are in compliance with the laws and regulations. Uh, accordingly, we recommend approval of the provisional license with the previously mentioned conditions. Thank you. Are there any questions? And, uh, could I have a uh, motion, please, to approve staff recommendation to uh, approve a provisional license for Late Spring Incorporated Doing Businesses Gauge Cannabis Company, MRN 281248? Can I have a second, please? Let the record show Commissioner McBride made a motion to approve, seconded by Commissioner Flanagan. Commissioner Doyle, your vote? Aye. Commissioner McBride? Aye. Commissioner Tyler? Aye. Commissioner Flanagan? Aye. Commissioner Hoffman? Aye. Let the record show the Commission unanimously approved staff recommendation for Late Spring Incorporated DBA Gate Cannabis Company, MRN 281248. Thank you. Uh, next two licenses, and I hope I don't mispronounce this, um, are for Temescal Wellness of Massachusetts, uh, starting with MRN 281588, Retailer. Um, I approve the license for Temescal Wellness of Massachusetts. Um, I have a conflict with this, and our legal counsel suggested that the most cautious thing to do would be to step out. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Don't worry, I'll watch it. Uh, Mr. Executive Director. Sure, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So the entity, as you indicated, is uh, Temescal Wellness of Massachusetts. Uh, the 
proposed address for the establishment is 10 Callahan Drive in Pittsfield. The application of license being sought is that of a retailer. This applicant also has submitted cultivation product manufacturing and another retail application pending with the commission. Uh, the individual is indicated on the uh, application of Robert Johnson and Edward Rebels. I apologize if I mispronounced it. Uh, both are indicated as board members. Uh, to Mezcal Wellness of Massachusetts LLC has indirect authority over the applicant. I was formed for the purpose of providing initial capital and operations management services for the RFP business. Uh, the application, the applicant represents that Edward Rebels, again, I apologize for this mispronunciation, exercises 100% of control of that entity. This applicant is an RFP priority applicant, and they are in compliance with the Department of Public Health. They have a provisional certificate for dispensing cultivation processing in Pittsfield, as well as an FCR uh, for dispensing in Hudson and cultivation processing in Worcester. The host community agreement was executed on May 25th. We received certification to that effect. And the community outreach meeting was held on April 13th with notice published in the Berkshire Eagle. There were no objections raised or uh, communicated to the commission. We received response from the municipality on August 23rd. Their plan to positively impact areas of disproportionate impact includes assisting individuals concealing cannabis related criminal records by continuing to provide guidance and resources, providing economic opportunity for those who have been harmed by cannabis prohibition providing safe consumer access to the legal adult use cannabis uh, market and reducing the historic stigma and associated prejudices of marijuana in the locations in which it operates. There were no concerns uh, raised during the background check on individuals or entities associated with the application and no disclosures of any past civil or criminal uh, actions or occupational license issues. Uh, there are individuals that disclose business interests in other jurisdictions. That includes uh, Tabasco Wellness in New Hampshire, to Mezcal Wellness in Maryland uh, for Edward <coughs> Rebels. Uh, we do not present any suitability issues. Uh, secure, they happily did secure a certificate of good standing from the Department of Revenue as well as the Secretary of the Commonwealth. Their proposed timeline to be operational, excuse me, is that they are, the applicant states that medical marijuana sales will commence in September, that this location can be operational in the adult use market for the fourth quarter of 2018. Proposed hours of operation are Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 7 p.m., and Sunday, 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. They submitted the required summaries. We've evaluated those summaries and determined that they be substantially compliant with our regulations. The summary of diversity plan includes continuing to work with a staffing agency to hire minority individuals from communities such as Pittsfield that have been, dis that have been harmed by cannabis prohibition. Uh, continuing to utilize the Mass Supplier Diversity Office in order to identify certified women, minority, and veteran-owned businesses for vending and contracting services, continuing to hold equal opportunity career fairs, and measuring the diversity of the organization against the demographics of the marijuana establishments post community. This is a retail uh, application, so the applicant has vertically integrated R&D that is applying for adult use cultivation and product manufacturing licenses. In addition to providing its own supply of marijuana, it plans to procure additional supply from existing R&D wholesale partners those partners are also granted adult use licenses. The commission staff recommends issuing a provisional license with the following conditions. The final license is subject to certification that the applicant remains in compliance with EPH regulations. The final license is subject to inspection and audit to ascertain compliance with our regulations. The final license is subject to inspection and audit to ascertain that their facilities are compliant with all applicable state and local codes, bylaws, ordinances, and regulations. They should cooperate with and provide information to the commission staff. And the provisional license is subject to payment to the license fee. This recommendation is based on the applicant's demonstrated compliance with the laws and regulations of the Commonwealth and suitability for licensure upon the evaluation of the thoroughness of the applicant's responses. Uh, as of this date, the applicant has demonstrated their compliance and therefore recommend a provisional license with the previously mentioned conditions. Thank you. Further questions? Uh, then uh, let me ask for a motion, please, to approve the staff recommendation to approve Domestic Wellness of Massachusetts, Inc., MRN 281588 for a provisional license as a retailer. A motion, please. Can I have a second, please? Second. Sorry. Uh, let the record show Commissioner McBride made a motion to approve, seconded by Commissioner Flanagan. Um, Commissioner Doyle, your vote, please. Aye. Commissioner McBride? Aye. Commissioner Flanagan? Aye. Commissioner Hoffman? Aye. Let the record show the, uh, the commission approved the granting provisional license to Domestic Wellness, Massachusetts, MRN 281588 by a vote of four to one, four um, in favor. Commissioner McBride, uh, Commissioner 
Doyle, Commissioner Flanagan, uh, Chairman Hoffman, with Commissioner Title abstaining, or was the correct uh, terminology, Christine? Uh, is for, uh, how do I uh, characterize Commissioner Title's vote or non vote? That she didn't vote or she abstained? She abstained, okay, so again, I think I got it right there. Thank you very much. Um, next, again, to Mescal Wellness, Massachusetts, MRN 281309, retailer. Mr. Executive Director. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. As you indicated, this is uh, to Mescal Wellness, Massachusetts. The proposed address is 252 Coolidge Street, Hudson. This license being sought is that of the retailer. The applicant has also submitted a cultivation. Uh, a product manufacturing license or application and just to secure a uh, retail provisional license. The individual is identified with the same as previously mentioned, the entity is identified with the same as previously mentioned, and this is an RMB priority applicant. The host community agreement was executed on June 8th. The community outreach meeting was held on March 30th, and there were no objections raised to the commission. We did receive a response from the municipality on September 13th. The applicant the proposed plan of positively to positively impact the areas of disproportionate impact uh, is the same as previously mentioned. There are no uh, concerns raised during the background check on individuals or entities, and no disclosures of any past similar criminal actions or any occupational license issues. Uh, the proposed business interests of the jurisdictions are the same as previously mentioned that do not pose or raise any suitability issues. The applicant, uh, their timeline to become operational. This applicant currently operates an RMD dispensary at this location. They state that they've taken all necessary steps to be operational in the adult use industry upon the issuance of a final license. The proposed hours of operation are Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 7 p.m., and Sunday, 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. They submitted all the required summaries. Uh, those summaries have been determined to be substantially compliant. The diversity plan uh, is the same as mentioned previously as well. Again, this is a retail application, so their plan to obtain marijuana or marijuana products includes their approved integrated RMD. Applying for adult use cultivation product manufacturing and in addition to providing their own supply, they plan to procure additional supply from existing RMD wholesale partners if those partners are also granted adult use licenses. The Commission staff recommends issuing a provisional license with the following conditions. The final license is subject to certification of the applicant who remains in compliance with DGH regulations. The final license is subject to inspection and audit to ascertain compliance with the requirements of our regulations. The final license is subject to inspection and audit to ascertain that its facilities are compliant with all applicable state and local codes, bylaws, or business regulations. The applicant shall cooperate with the commission staff. The provisional license is subject to the payment of the appropriate license fee. This recommendation is based on the applicant's demonstrated compliance with the laws and regulations of the Commonwealth, and suitability for licensure, and upon the evaluation of the thoroughness of their application. Um, as of this date, they have demonstrated compliance with the laws and regulations of the Commonwealth, and we therefore recommend the approval of the provisional license. Thank you. Are there any questions? Thank you. I have a motion to approve the staff recommendation for Temescal Wellness, Massachusetts, MRN 281309. Can I have a second, please? Second. The Director of Commission McBride made the motion to approve, seconded by Commissioner Flanagan. Commissioner Doyle, your vote? Aye. Commissioner McBride? Aye. Commissioner Flanagan? Aye. Commissioner Hoffman? Aye. Let the record show that the uh, Commission approved uh, the staff recommendation for Tobacco Wellness, Massachusetts, MRN 281309, uh, with four in favor. Commissioner McBride, Commissioner Flanagan, Commissioner Doyle, uh, Commissioner Hoffman, with Commissioner Title abstaining. Thank you. Uh, Eric, did you get Thank you. Did she leave or she come back? Uh, Alternative Therapies Group Incorporated, MRN 281344, Retailer. Mr. Executive Director. Chairman of the entity, uh, applying here is Alternative Therapies Group. The proposed address is 107 Elm Street, Salisbury. The license being sought is that of a retailer. This applicant has also secured a provisional license uh, for two retail locations, a cultivation facility, as well as a product manufacturing provisional license. The individuals listed are the same as previously indicated for ATG, which is Edwards, Julio Fuentes, George Christie, and Derek Brock. There are no other entities other than the applicant that have director that appear to have a director and direct control of the 
for the establishment, this applicant is an RMP priority applicant. The host community agreement was executed on August 13th. The community outreach meeting was held on July 25th. There were no objections communicated to the commission. We received a response from the municipality on September 6th. Uh, the plan to positively impact areas of disproportionate impact includes conducting career fairs in April with Lynn, scheduling and conducting formal interviews with individuals from April and Lynn, offering uh, job skill assessments and providing guidance for interested parties to receive training relevant, uh, relevant to the establishment's positions, continuing to make charitable donations to local nonprofit organizations and conducting food drives to benefit local food pantries. There were no concerns raised during the background check of individuals or entities no disclosures of any past civil or criminal actions or occupational license issues, uh, and no disclosures of any business interests in other jurisdictions. The plan to become operational is that there are uh, construction, there is construction going on at this location, which is commenced and should be completed by the second week of October. Uh, the proposed hours of operation are Monday through Sunday, 9 a.m. to 6.45 p.m. The applicant submitted the required summaries, and those summaries have been determined to be substantially compliant. Their plan, uh, their summary plan, diversity plan includes a diverse workforce. The applicant plans to build upon an already diverse staff of executives and managers. The applicant will provide an inclusive and flexible environment for employees by identifying and removing any remaining systemic uh, barriers to equitable access, participation, and progression and employment so that all employees have the opportunity to fully contribute to the life of the company. The applicant aims to create a working environment that allows employees to safely seek support to address issues arising from domestic or family violence. The applicant recognizes that employees may face situations of domestic and family violence that may have an impact on their attendance and productivity at work. And lastly, the applicant plans to perform staff surveys, analyze results, identify areas for improvement, and take corrective steps. The plan to obtain marijuana products includes that they are vertically integrated R&D and possess adult use provisional licenses for cultivation and product manufacturing. They plan to supply their own products for retail purposes. Commission staff recommends issuing a provisional license with the following conditions. That the final license is subject to certification that the applicant remains in compliance with DPH regulations. The final license is subject to inspection and audit to ascertain compliance with our regulations. The final license is subject to inspection and audit to ascertain that their facilities are compliant with all applicable state and local codes, bylaws, ordinances, and regulations. That the applicant will cooperate with and provide information to commission staff. Provisional license is subject to the payment of the appropriate license fee. This recommendation is based on the applicant's demonstrated compliance with the laws and regulations of the Commonwealth, the suitability for licensure, and upon the evaluation of the thoroughness of the applicant's responses. Uh, as of this date, the applicant has demonstrated compliance, and we therefore recommend a provisional license with the previously mentioned conditions. Thank you. Are there any questions? Can I have a motion, please, to approve the staff recommendation on Alternative Therapy Group Incorporated MRN 281344 Retailer? Second. And second, please. Second. Uh, Let her choke Commissioner McBride made the motion to approve, seconded by Commissioner Title. Your vote, Ms. Uh, Commissioner Doyle? Aye. Commissioner McBride? Aye. Commissioner Title? Aye. Commissioner Flanagan? Aye. Commissioner Hoffman and I, let the record show the commission unanimously approved the recommendation of staff on Alternative Therapies Group Incorporated MRN 281344. Thank you. Uh, the next two um, and the last two are both from Central Avenue Compassionate Care Incorporated. First, uh, MCN 281505, Tier 1 Indoor Cultivation. Mr. Executive Director. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You indicated the applicant is Central Avenue Compassionate Care. Address is 31 Central Avenue in Care. The license being sought is that of a cultivator Tier 1, which authorizes up to 5,000 square feet of cultivation. The applicant has also applied for a product manufacturing license. Uh, and as I indicated previously, Mr. John Hillier is also the owner of this entity as well as Late Spring Incorporated, DBA, PH Cannabis Company. Individuals uh, associated with this establishment are John Hillier, Valerie Hillier, and Kenneth Frank. There are no other entities other than this applicant that have direct or indirect control of the establishment. This applicant is an RMD priority applicant. Their host community agreement was executed on March 27th, with a community outreach meeting held on March 21st. There were no objections raised to the commission. We did receive a response from the municipality on August 22nd, stating that they are in fact in compliance with all local ordinances and bylaws. 
their plan to positively impact areas with disproportionate impact uh, is to do the following. Hold an informational session skill assessments, job fairs, and resume cover letter workshops at least three times per year at Fitchburg, Lowell, and Worcester to help individuals in those areas build the necessary skills to become more attractive employment candidates, giving a hiring preference to individuals from areas of disproportionate impact, and supporting local charities and community organizations. After one year of operating in the intelligence market, the applicant will review the following in order to measure the success of their plan. Attendance at the informational sessions and workshops, outcome of interviews generated from job fairs, overall staff that are past or present residents of disproportionate impacted areas, and the overall financial support provided to local charities and community organizations. There were no concerns raised during the background check on individuals or entities, and no disclosures of any past civil or criminal actions or occupational license issues, as well as no disclosures of any business interest in other jurisdictions. The proposed timeline to become operational is that they're currently an RMD, Alberta Intermittent RMD. The applicant states that it will be operational in the adult use market within two months of being issued a provisional license. The proposed timeline or hours of operation are Monday through Sunday, 6 a.m. to 11.30 p.m. They supplied uh, the required summaries, and those summaries have been determined to be substantially compliant. The diversity plan includes conducting deliberate advertising uh, and other forms of outreach to ensure diverse individuals are aware of employment openings, developing and implementing a screening system to mitigate bias of any employees in the interview process, providing trainings and professional development opportunities to staff at all levels, conducting, conducting annual reviews of applicant pools, staff demographics, and changes in employment status, whether it be promotions or raises, to ensure that its goal of a diverse and unbiased workforce is in fact achieved. Uh, this is a production license. There were no, uh, there was no summary of plans to cultivate issued or supplied to the commission, which will be inspected um, and gathered during the inspection process. The commission staff recommends issuing a provisional license with the following conditions, that their final license is subject to certification that the applicant remains in compliance with DPH regulations, their final license is subject to inspection on it to ascertain compliance with the requirements listed in our regulations, their final license is subject to inspection on it to ascertain that their facilities are compliant with all of the state and local codes, bylaws, ordinances, and regulations, the applicant shall cooperate with and provide information to commission investigators, agents, and employees upon request, the provisional license is subject to the payment of the appropriate license fee, recommendation is based on the applicant's demonstrated compliance with the laws and regulations of the Commonwealth in suitability for licensure, and upon the evaluation of the thoroughness of their responses to the required criteria, uh, this applicant has demonstrated their compliance with therefore recommend a provisional license with the previously mentioned conditions. Thank you. Are there any questions? Uh, next time, motion please to approve the staff recommendation for Central Ad Compassion Care Incorporated, MCM 281505. I have a second, please. Second. I'll let the record show Commissioner Flanagan made a motion to approve seconded by Commissioner McBride. Uh, your vote, Commissioner Doyle? Aye. Commissioner McBride? Aye. Commissioner Title? Aye. Commissioner Flanagan? Aye. Commissioner Hoffman? Aye. Let the record show that the Commission unanimously approved staff recommendation for Central Avenue Compassionate Care Incorporated, number MCN 281505. Thank you. Uh, last uh, is also Central Ave, Compassionate Care Incorporated, number MPN 281399, product manufacturer. Mr. Executive Director. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. This is also Central Ave, Compassionate Care. The noise address is 31 Central Avenue with AIR. The license being sought is that of a product manufacturer. Uh, they previously just secured their cultivation provisional license. As previously indicated, uh, Mr. Gillier is the owner of this entity as well as Late Spring Incorporated. Cannabis. They've also applied for their adult use license. The same individuals are identified on this application. There are no other entities identified that having, having direct or indirect control of the establishment. And this is also an RFP priority applicant. The community, I'm sorry, the host community agreement was executed on March 27th. Community outreach meeting on March 21st. We received a response from the municipality on August 22nd. Their plan to positively impact the areas of disproportionate impact is the same as previously indicated. No concerns raised during the background check on individuals or entities associated with the application, as well as no disclosures of any past civil or criminal actions or occupational license issues. Uh, their proposed timeline is that they're currently operating as an RMD in this location. The applicant states will be operational in the adult use market within two months of being issued a provisional license. The proposed hours of operation are Monday through Sunday, 6 a.m. to 11.30 p.m. The, they would submit the required summaries. 
those summaries have been determined to be substantially compliant. Their diverse, uh, summary of the diversity plan is the same as previously indicated. Uh, and as indicated previously, there was no summary provided for the products to be produced, which will be gathered and ascertained upon inspection. The Commission staff recommend issuing a provisional license with the following conditions. That your final license is subject to certification that the applicant remains in compliance with the EPH regulations. That their final license is subject to inspection and audit to ascertain compliance with our regulations. Final license is subject to inspection and audit to ascertain that their facilities are compliant with all applicable state and local codes, bylaws, ordinances, and regulations. That the applicant will cooperate with and provide information to the commission staff. That the provisional license is subject to the payment of the appropriate license fee. This recommendation is based on the applicant's demonstrated compliance with the laws and regulations of the Commonwealth, the suitability for licensure, and upon the evaluation of the thoroughness of the applicant's responses to the required criteria. As of this date, the applicant has demonstrated compliance. We therefore recommend a provisional license with Thank you. Are there any questions? I have a motion, please, to approve the staff recommendation for Central Avenue Compassion and Care Incorporated MPN 281399. Second. I have a second, please. I'll let Commissioner Clark <coughs> make a motion to approve, seconded by Commissioner McBride. Your vote, Commissioner Doyle? Aye. Commissioner McBride? Aye. Commissioner Tyler? Aye. Commissioner Flanagan? Aye. Commissioner Hoffman, I let the record show that the Commission unanimously approved staff recommendation for Central Lab Compassion and Care Incorporated number MPN 281399. Thank you. Um, I think I'm going to do this every time we, uh, we do provisional license reviews. I just want to, uh, again, express my thanks to the staff, particularly the enforcement and uh, investigation staff for the uh, thorough and hard work on all of these and, and for processing as many as they had. And, well, it was a short period of time, so thank you very much to the entire staff involved in this. Uh, anything else, Mr. Executive Director? Uh, next meeting uh, is two weeks from today, October 4th, 2018. Please note that the location and the time are TBD. Uh, we are once again you know, begging uh, people, by the way, thank you to the Mass Health Policy Commission for allowing us to use their facilities today, but uh, we'll find a location and obviously publish it ahead of time. I just also want to put people on alert that it is likely but not certain that we'll do it earlier in the day, so please pay attention to uh, the posting um, of the next meeting. Uh, but it will be on October 4th, two weeks from today. Uh, there being no further business before the commission, I would like to ask for a motion to adjourn. Second, please. Second. Uh, I think we do have time for us to do a voice vote quickly. Um, Commissioner Doyle? Aye. Commissioner McBride? Aye. Commissioner Flanagan? Aye. Commissioner Tunnel? Aye. I, oh, we are adjourned as of 2.23 p.m. on the 20th of September. Thank you very much. <laughs>